which is the best and most efficient cooling system when it comes to cryptocurrency mining. Air cooling, immersion cooling, or hydro cooling, aka water cooling. In this video, we'll be discussing all the pros and cons of each type of system. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to choose the system that will work best for you. My name is Marco and you're watching Crypto Mining Lab. So before talking about the cooling system, different type of cooling systems, we need to know the different type of miners existing in the market right now. So the most popular ASIC miners are air-cooled. And then from this category, we have air-cooled miners versus the liquid cooled miners. Liquid, liquid cooled miners include immersion cooling as well as hydro cooling and uh, water cooling. So basically, if we compare these two head to head, basically the, uh, the liquid cooling will be more efficient uh, in terms of cooling than air cooled. It's just physics, liquid can carry more heat uh, than air. So basically air cooled, uh, air cooled miners, they use uh, high speed fans, you know, to blow air into the heat sinks that are located on the top of the hash ports to carry the heat outside. So using air to to carry the heat outside, to dissipate the heat. In the other hand, what we have is either uh, immersion cooling or hydro cooling. We're using the liquid to carry the heat and have some type of uh, cooling system that brings that uh, heat to the outside and dissipate it to the atmosphere. So if you compare head to head air cooling versus liquid cooling, basically liquid cooling will win. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, immersion cooling or uh, hydro cooling. We will come to the difference between these two in a moment. But if you compare air versus liquid, liquid will win. It's just because it can carry more heat and uh, the, the transfer of the heat is much greater than air. And th this is why most of the manufacturers right now are switching to high, uh, you know, high hash rate output miners using hydro cooling. It's just because they cannot achieve these numbers using air cooling and the problem there is because running these chips on a higher frequency will create more heat and it's a problem to dissipate the heat. And now let's talk about the difference between immersion cooling as well as the hydro cooling. So both these systems are using liquid to dissipate the heat but they're doing it in a different way. If you take immersion cooling the way it works is by submerging the whole machine inside a, a pool where uh, the pool is full of fluid uh, the electric fluid which doesn't conduct electricity so it allows the uh, the normal operation of the machine and that liquid will be uh, flowing through uh, the miner and through, through the uh, heat sinks and transferring the heat from the heat sinks to the fluid which will be taken somewhere else uh, to be cooled and then we circulate it back to the to the pool so this is the basic one how it works in the other hand we have hydro cooled ASIC miners these miners are different than immersion so you don't have to uh, submerge them inside a liquid instead what they have is they have specific uh, aluminum blocks uh, mounted uh, and built into the hash board sitting on the top of the chips and you have a liquid coolant running through this uh, this uh, aluminum blocks and this liquid will carry the heat and uh, take it outside to a, a cooling system where the heat will be dissipated and recirculate it back again fresh into the miners so this is the way these two uh, dissipate the heat uh, compared to air cooling now let's talk about the pros and cons of each of these systems. So if we take air cooling, the pros, the advantage of using this type of system is easy to install, easy to use, and doesn't require a lot of maintenance. So basically you get the miner from the factory installed with the fans and everything, you just uh, you just put it somewhere where you can dissipate the heat outside, uh, have ventilation, and plug it to your uh, power outlet and let it run. And even when they go down, uh, usually they're the fans and uh, you can replace them very easily. So this is one of the pros of this kind of cooling. And the downside of running ASIC miners with air cooling is they make a lot of noise and you cannot run them on hot weather. For example, if you take the Middle East as an example, where temperatures usually reach uh, 50 to 55 degrees Celsius in summer, this type of cooling will not work because the outside air that you're pulling and pushing into the miner, it's already hot, so it, it's not it's not going to carry that much heat from the heat sinks. So this is the second downside of running this type of miners. And also the third thing is these are limited in terms of hash rate. So they are not the most powerful ASIC miners in the market, just because they run on air cooling and they require really a specific uh, weather uh, climate to run properly. And now let's talk about pros and cons of liquid cooling, either immersion cooling or hydro cooling. 
uh, the pros of using this, uh, this type of cooling system is it's more efficient. It carries a lot of heat outside uh, and that heat also, because it's a liquid, it's contained inside the liquid, it can be reused for other purposes like heating up a house or a building or a facility. So you don't, uh, you don't need to consume more electricity uh, or more power to uh, heat up a facility. And the other thing is these miners run in at really high hash rates. If we take an example of the Watts Miner Hydro uh, M53 S++, which runs up to 340 terahash in a single miner, which is impressive. Uh, Air-cooled miners, the maximum hash rate uh, uh, actually in the market right now is 140 terahash on air-cooled. So that's more than double the hash rate of any air-cooled miner. That's the, the second uh, advantage of having a liquid-cooled ASIC miner. And the third thing is these systems run quietly. So they don't make a lot of noise and you can fit a lot of hash rate in a small location. You just have to set it up properly and uh, have your cooling system outside and usually doesn't make that much of noise compared to air-cooled mining. Uh, the same thing goes for immersion cooling. They run very quietly. And the, the most advantage that immersion cooling has actually, it's not only the that it's more efficient in terms of uh, cooling, but you can convert, you can take any air-cooled miner and you can put it in a pool, remove the fans, clean it properly, put it in a pool, and you can convert anything from air-cooled to liquid-cooled just by using an immersion system and eliminating all the noise and that comes from these high-speed fans used in air-cooled miners. The downside of using uh, hydro cooling or immersion cooling liquid cooling uh, systems, ASIC miners, the downside is going to be the, uh, the cost of uh, running the system. So basically, these systems require an, uh, an external uh, cooling system to dissipate the heat from the miners. So this usually comes at high cost compared to air cooling that doesn't require anything, only shelves where you can place them. But basically, any immersion cooling or hydro cooling system would come with a cost, which is more than air cooling. That's one of the downsides. The second downside is these will require uh, a constant monitoring of the of the system and it has to be built on high quality. So uh, you have redundancy in all the systems so it doesn't fail. And the maintenance is required and usually it's costly. So this is the downside of running liquid cooled miners. Well, having uh, experience with all these three types of cooling, air cooling, immersion cooling, as well as liquid uh, hydro cooling. I will place them, uh, rank them this way. So we have the hydro on the top, then we have immersion, and then we have uh, air cooling uh, at the bottom in terms of cooling and efficiency. Now let's jump into the last uh, part of this video and answering the question, which is what is the best setup that will work for each uh, individual running a cryptocurrency mining uh, operation? So each of these systems have their pros and cons. Based on my experience running all these three type of cooling and the different type of uh, ASIC miners, I will break it down for each type and what is, what is the best uh, usage of this type of cooling depends on a few factors. So the first factor will be the type of ASIC miners that you have already. So if you already have ASIC miners that are uh, air-cooled and you live in a cold climate that, that doesn't exceed let's say 35, 38 degrees uh, uh, Celsius uh, at any time, and you are located in a remote area where the noise from the ASIC miners will not bother anyone surrounding you, then I would think the best way is just to stick to air cooling because they don't require a lot, a lot of uh, maintenance and they don't require a lot of systems to run cooling and they are easy to maintain and easy to set up. If you have air cooled miners, but the uh, noise from the miners is disturbing others surrounding you and you want to make them quieter or the climate that you're living in is hot enough to compromise the operation of your ASIC miners during uh, summertime, I would suggest to take these uh, air-cooled miners and uh, set them up in an immersion cooling pool. That will eliminate the problem of the noise and that will provide more efficiency cooling than air cooling. So it's an easy swap, doesn't require a lot of things, just removing the fans, cleaning them properly, get an immersion setup, put them inside and you're done. So you, you solve all the problems just with one system. Yes, it's costly, but it will solve the problems quickly. If you don't have any miners 
and you're planning to start your mining operations soon, then it's a no-brainer to go for hydro-cooled ASIC miners. And the reason why is because they're the most efficient in terms of power consumption, they produce a lot of uh, hash rate. Yes, they are more costly, but it just doesn't make sense to go uh, to a lower hash rate ASIC miners since the difficulty on the uh, uh, on any uh, cryptocurrency mining is just going up and will require more and more hash rate in the future. So for long-term investment, if you're going to invest in, in, in this type of uh, you know, mining facility, then it's, it's best to go for the best. So to go for the hydro, which will provide you with a hash rate that will be sustainable for, the, for at least the next two or three years, uh, considering the increase of the hash rate through the network of uh, any uh, mineable coins. So it just doesn't make sense to go and buy any old air-cooled miners if, uh, even if you live in a remote area, it just doesn't make sense because most of these air-cooled miners are already low in hash rate compared to uh, hydro-cooled ASIC miners. This will be all for today's video. I hope this video will be helpful for a lot of people. Either you already have uh, uh, mining operations running or you're planning to do so in the near future and at least it can give you an idea on what to go for in terms of cooling as well as uh, the type of miners you, you want to invest in. So I hope this video will help a lot of people. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so and leave a comment if you have any questions, uh, give us your opinion on uh, the different type of cooling uh, that exists in the mic right now and I will see you in the next one.